Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Calvin Taylor, uh, presents from Green Nuts Press Network. Momentarily, I will be interviewing uh, New Jersey Green uh, Party member uh, Madeline Hoffman, who is facing a one Democrat. I'm not really sure that person is. I apologize for my inaccuracy on that, but uh, they will be going against uh, Cody Burford uh, for his seat at the in the Senate. Um, from what I have gathered uh, so far, Madeline Hoffman seems more. Um, prepared and qualified for the job than uh, Cory Booker does. Cory Booker may have had the experience, but he has done all the wrong things in regards to his policies, what he's voted against, voted for, stuff like that. But in any case, just so that I can get this out right now and not really have to worry about it later, um, if you want to support this network, please support it by donating at paypal.me slash zwebdev uh, or you can always subscribe to my channel on my network on youtube at green Nuts progressive network on youtube um, but right now i will be much waiting uh, anyway. all right right on yeah. um now we're official um, and I, now, can, I consent to being recorded. That's fine. <laughs> well, I'm not going to leave the meeting just because I'm being recorded. <laughs> well, I think you consent to when we say, sure, let's do it again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it, it has this thing up on the screen. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's gone. I, I clicked on uh, continue. Oh, okay. Well, good. Um, well, one of the things I wanted to uh, ask was how's your campaign going? Well, that is um, a very important question, and I would have to say that my campaign is going well, um, despite the difficult circumstances. Um, by difficult, I mean what's happening with COVID-19 in, in New Jersey and around the country. Um, and that's, I guess, part of what my campaign is focused on. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit. It's the whether or not we can open up or reopen up the schools, whether we should reopen up the schools, whether it should be the same thing in New Jersey as everywhere else in the country. Um, I did get some traction off uh, um, an op-ed piece I wrote that said let's hit the pause button because there's just too many unanswered questions about whether or not it's safe to reopen the schools and you know, I've been reading more about it, and um, it's easier for for parents of children in affluent communities to have their children learn remotely. So, not only than it is than it is for kids, say in 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 Newark or Trenton or Camden or other inner city. So, not only are we making or asking our students and children to bear a lot of the responsibility for reopening. You know, can you wear the mask? Can you keep the mask on? Can you, can you follow all this protocol for the entire school day? Yeah. But we're asking the kids in lower income, low to moderate income families to be the ones that shoulder it, which is always who we ask to shoulder you know, the, the multiple problems of the society. So um, the, the kids of affluent parents are usually not uh, struggling for, you know, they're not wondering where their next meal is going to come from. They're not wondering whether they have access to a laptop or whatever they need to get the, to get access to the remote learning. So that's, that's one, um, one issue that I've been focused on lately. And from the minute I got my first, my point of view out there, it's just spiraled because it is a major, a major issue confronting the entire, confronting the entire country. Also issues like today, the unemployment, the extra $600 a week unemployment. Um, 200, I think, right? Is it down to 200? Uh, is, it, uh, is it definite? Is it definite? Uh, well, that's what's in the, uh, the news bill that they're trying to 
kind of uh, as NPR has been uh, recording, which I've been I, I kind of that point of phrase not personally responsible um, as far as as far as being a channel is that this sometimes their news is not exactly the best of news as far as the accuracy. So well, I don't know, but yeah, even if it's even if that is true, which I think it probably is. Um, it hasn't been voted on yet for sure, for certain. So, you know, whether it will be what we wind up with or not. And I, I've been thinking about this all day today. You know, the, the rationale that some give for um, not maintaining the $600 a week extra is, oh, well, it's, deter it's discouraging people from going back to work because they actually make more money if they don't go to work. And I and I just I just want to all right, I want to yell about that a little bit because what's discouraging people from going back to work is COVID-19. What's discouraging people from going back to work is the fear for their health and fear for their family's health. So don't blame it on I mean, and, and, and this situation is not the workers doing. The situation is something that's been mishandled, I believe, from the federal government, mostly from the federal government and then some state governments. New Jersey, not so much, but not, you know, it's not been handled the way it should either, should be handled either. So that's another issue is what's going to happen to the people who lose their unemployment, if they lose those extra $600 a week, if the moratorium on ev evictions is not lifted, I mean, it is, is not extended, um, if the cancellation of rent, if the cancellation of mortgages, if the cancellation of student debt, all of that, if that all of a sudden, you know, goes back to what it was before the pandemic, um, a lot more families are going to be out in the streets. A lot more families are going to be homeless and hungry. And so that's that was yet another issue that I've been um, addressing in the last week or so. Yeah. Uh, what, what has uh, Cory Booker uh, been doing in that regard? In well, comparison, that is. Well, the thing is that going back to... March, when the CARES Act was originally passed, he was content at uh, that time to accept the fact that homeless people, students, undocumented, and others were not covered by the bill. Um, and that was a cause for concern, for my concern way at the very beginning. Now, um, haven't really heard and I know that there are a lot of people who don't think that Senator Booker is representing them, who think that Senator Booker is representing, still representing Wall Street over the people. And this will be a very important, this is a very important vote and a very important moment because people still need assistance. People still need that safety net. And if things continue, just reading today as well, that the transmission rate is one to one. For a while, it was underneath one. Less, you know, each one of us is infecting less than one additional person. Now it's one to one. So we. I, I don't know. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if we're at a we're at a point yet where it's sufficiently under control that all these other plans that are on the table, um, whether this is the time to continue to open. Now, again, in New Jersey, it, it might be a little safer than, say, Florida or Texas or California. Yeah. Um, but, but what does that mean to say it's a little safer? Um, I just, you know, I was reading about... Um, Oh, I don't know. I, and people are people think that because the economy has opened up a little, that they can relax, and that's been a problem. So, yeah, in, in, in those states that have opened up a little more than uh, they should have, 
like Florida, like Texas, and other, uh, and a couple of other states that are run by Republicans or even Democrats, actually, uh, in, some, in some cases, their uh, their COVID nineteen cases have skyrocketed because uh, people at that moment, I guess, just think that oh, they're opened up. Okay, cool, we can go out and just do what we want as far as that goes. All of a sudden, they did it and they're stuck back inside. But yeah. they're but but they're but they're having to recover from it. Yeah, and the the problem is the economics of this, and this is we talked about this the the first time we spoke. Yeah, it's. It's wrong. It's like it's the same thing with the students, with the children yeah. in the school. It's wrong to say, uh, well, it's wrong. It's wrong to have the the kids or the elderly or um, the workers be the ones who are sacrificing themselves for the sake of the economy. That puts profits over the health of people. Um, Daniel Patrick, the um, lieutenant governor of Texas, said about three or four months ago uh, that anybody over the age of 70, anyone who's a grandparent, um, should be really, should be ready and willing to sacrifice their health for the sake of their grandkids. And so why don't you, you know, why don't the elderly go back to work? Um, so we can keep the wheels rolling and uh, wheels of the economy rolling and, and all will be well. And, you know, why should any group of human beings be the ones that are asked to sacrifice for the sake of the economy? We can well, that, that's, well, that's, the same, that's the same concept of going to war. They don't want to send their own kids to war. They want to send the uh, the low income, the African American, the mi minority, if you will, to war to fight for a country that that treats them poorly. And it wasn't very, and it wasn't very fact that a lot of like disabled people, like myself, who are not exactly up to par intellectually uh, to be able to fight in wars, um, they would send them too. They would send people like myself too. Mm. Yeah, well, the, I mean, it's, it's again, it's that military industrial complex. Yeah. It's another, it's another issue that uh, came up in between our last interview and today, and that was the National Defense Authorization Act and an amendment to that, which and I, this, this, this also sticks in my craw. Um, it, the amendment suggested or, or put forward a proposal to cut the military budget by 10%. Yeah. Now, I was the director of a nonprofit peace organization for 18 years plus. And we, when we called for a cut, we called for 25% cut. Yeah. A 25% cut. Now, as a candidate, um, well, two years ago as a candidate, I called for 20, a 25% cut. This time around, I'm calling for a 50% cut. And Howie Hawkins, the nominee at the federal level for U.S. president, mm -hmm. he's calling for a 75% cut. Yeah. And then when you see how the vote went in both the House and the Senate. Yeah. Okay, in the Senate, there were... 22, perhaps 22 Democrats, might have been 23, 23 Democrats who voted in favor of this amendment to cut the military budget by 10%. Now that's still, since it's a $740 billion budget, it's $7.4 billion. A lot can be done with that, but yeah. it's minuscule compared to what we could be doing. All right, so that that failed miserably in the Senate. Yeah. And then failed miserably in the House, where uh, 93, 92 representatives voted in favor of it, um, of the cut. One was a libertarian, and the rest were all Democrats. Yeah. Not a single yeah. Republican voted, um, voted for it. But so many, over 180 Democrats voted against it also yeah so so i wrote something that got traction too i said 
you know, I, I long I stopped expecting some making excuses. I stopped making excuses for the Democrats a long time ago. So this doesn't surprise me. Um, but it's troublesome because yeah. during this time when the needs of the people are so great, if ever there was a time to cut back on the military budget, if ever there was a reason to cut back on the military budget, this is it. Extended sick pay, health care for all, extend, improved and expanded Medicare for all, yep. um, universal basic income, you name it. Yep. We need that money that's tied up in wars or military action because it's not been a declared war in, for a really very long time. Yep. We need that money to be spent right here at home and neither the Democrats nor the Republicans really give, you know, really care about that because yeah. if they would, not only would they have voted for the 10% cut, they probably would have said, hey, why do we need to stop there? Let's, let's go further. Um, yeah. This is why I, every time I have a chance to be on camera or regards to either a Facebook Live or one of my episodes or when I talk to someone like yourself, I'm always saying that I'm, that's why I push and advocate for shocking the system at the ballot box and voting non-establishment. That means no, not voting for DNC, that means not voting for RNC, that means not voting for anybody that is on the in the far in the far right or even in the middle because DNC essentially are, in my in my view, the moderate Republicans. And yeah. the progressives are just just on the left, just a bit, yeah. but not by much, according, right. to, according to some of the uh, votes I've, I've seen and heard about. Well, so. if you take the whole political spectrum and you think back to Bill Clinton in 1992, mm -hmm. 1996, you take the whole political spectrum and it's all moved. It's all moved to yeah. the right. So what was, so anything that was, you know, anything that was liberal is now centrist. I mean, a lot of the things that you just said exactly, are, yeah. are, are true because the whole spectrum is like taking a, a ruler and moving it over. Exactly, yeah. Once, yeah. once people realize there's more than just two parties at the table, then there's like at least two or three uh, on the other side. SPOC at a state level, uh, Green Party at a state and national and now federal level. They also have Social Alternative, which as far as I know about are at least at the state level in Seattle. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure who else is it, as far as the SAs are in other states, but uh, Sawan is the only one that I know about in Seattle right now. Right, I, mean, right. I, may, I may be wrong about that, but that's the one I, that has gotten more attention. No, and, I, yeah, you're right about her, yeah. But that's the reason why people need to realize that there's more than just two people and two parties, but which essentially are one party nowadays, one is just more left and right. Well, and the pro the thing is that I've been following, um, I first was I able to vote in 1976. So I've been voting for 40 years. This will be 44 years coming around. So that's 11 times um, mm -hmm. this this election cycle for president, that is. Yeah. Um, and every time, I mean, in seven, 1976, I wasn't following the politics too well. I liked Jimmy Carter's smile and, you know, he said he was outside of the system, which he wasn't, but I was taken in by that. And I said, yeah. All right, I'll vote for Jimmy Carter with a nice smile. But then I got, I got a little more sophisticated, a little more politically savvy. Yeah. And every four years, there's somebody or somebody's who say, you can't run third party this time around. You can't run third party this yep. time around. Well, what do you mean you're running third party this time around? What about the Supreme Court? Or what about this? Or what about that? And, you know, I, I can't help but think that if we had started in 1980 with ranked choice voting, with the ability to vote for our first and second choices, I can't help but think that we'd be in a very different place today. Um, that there would be room for these parties that you're talking about. Yeah. Because um, 
right now, even people within, um, you know, nationally known, internationally known, in the peace movement, for example, they'll go, they'll say that Biden is not the answer on war and peace. They'll go through his track record, but then they'll say, we got to get rid of Trump, and then we'll move Joe Biden to the left. Um, yeah, yeah, no, uh, last I heard, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, last, last I heard when, when, uh, Biden kept saying he wasn't going to go with Medicare for all, that's when Bernie Sanders, okay, let's go with public option. For 40 years, he had been talking about Medicare for all, a single payer health care system and all this stuff, and all of a sudden, he turns around and says, okay, so, fine, single payer. He quits as, soon, as far as the party. He doesn't really fight as far as I know of, of that. So I'm like, uh, okay, basically the only thing he hasn't turned over to the DNC is his, uh, is his mailing, mailing list. And I don't think they're offering him enough money for that. You're, you're talking about Joe Biden? No, I'm talking about Bernie Sanders as far as that part goes. Oh, Bernie uh, Sanders? Yes. I just didn't hear you. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when Biden was saying that he wasn't going to go that far oh, left, right. yes. Bernie Sanders then said, "Okay, fine, public option. We don't have we don't have to do the major for all part." Yeah, because the the push right now, the push is to get is is just the the goal is to defeat Trump, and it is not to implement the kinds of policies that are necessary. And the problem with that is, if you don't keep the policy issues front and center, you lose track of where they are and what they are. Yeah. And as we've said, as we just said, that whole ruler thing keeps moving to the right as, and taking all the politics along with it. Yeah. So the Greens, I, I mean, I'm going to get, I'm going to get people saying, why are you in the race? What are you doing this for? Howie Hawkins, Angela Walker, they're going to get the same thing. Well, but the reason we're doing it is because the people of this country want, we've seen it, they want single payer health care, improved and expanded Medicare for all. They want an end to, you know, uh, military action. But even before that, they want tuition free college. They need an, an end to student debt. They need you know, um, uh, to be protected against evictions during this time period. They need a universal basic income. People need that. And the Greens are, only, are the only ones that I know of who are really talking about all of the issues and not sort of dancing around what's needed. Um, we talked about the military too. If you think of, you look at Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we said, uh, or the Black Lives Matter people have said, defund the police. And I would add defund and demilitarize the police. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and that's, I mean that, that's basically how they're getting uh, a lot of those uh, weaponry that they're using is yeah. through the, their bloated budget. Right, the, and the, the leftover tanks and other other um, pieces of equipment that are no longer needed overseas. Mm -hmm. But so you defund the military and then you defund the police so that more money can be spent in the community, building the communities up for education, and infrastructure and all of the other things that people need. And the country's in a lot different it will be in a lot different, in a much different place than it is right now. But without the Greens in the race to talk about this, without, uh, without an independent political party not taking the money from the big corporations, the, the military contractors, the pharmaceutical companies, um, the chemical companies and the like, um, I just signed the No Fossil Fuels Pledge also. I have to send that in to the people who ran that, who are running that pledge. I did it two years ago and I just did it again, but I have to send it uh, Is that the Young Turks or is that, who is that? 
No, it's um. But I don't remember the the exact like. Um, oh, oh, exact oh, 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 name um, of the organization. Something, it just, is it something boat? Not like right boat or something like that. Because I, uh, I, 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 there's one website that has some of your information and put down the code that I made for you. Uh, that's from like the right boat, the uh, something boat. Um, yeah, I don't think so. But I mean, I can find it so we can put it with with the uh, we can put it with the podcast. Um, it's no I think it's nofossilfuels.org is is what they call themselves. Are no fossil fuels, but I don't, not sure exactly who makes them up. But they have pledges that basically say, and go don't quite go far enough for me that they, because they say that um, they will accept that that I, as a candidate, I pledge not to accept more than two. Oh, I think I have it right here. Yes, I do. It's right here. It's uh, backwards, but. No, no, um, I actually, I actually just fine. Did it correctly? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, I, uh, I, uh, I, now, yeah. does, does that say who is born as far as the website or the group? No, it's, but I think it's nofossilfuels.org. Okay. And, and see this one, this one, it's, I took out what, what, what the current pledge says. Yeah. The current pledge says, I pledge not to take contributions of more than $200. Uh -huh the oil, gas, and coal industry, and instead prioritize the health of our families, climate, and democracy, mm -hmm. fossil fuel industry profits. But I, I took out the 200. I don't even want to take 150 from yeah. the fossil fuels industry. Nothing, nothing, because we have to get off of fossil fuels as soon as we can. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, we, we, we should be doing that for that. Uh, that and uh, we should be implementing a lot more uh, reu uh, uh, reusable, renewable energies. Yeah, and you can't kind of do the both of them at the same time. The more you commit to fossil fuels, the harder it's going to be to get off to, 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 to implement renewable energy as, a, as an alternative. Yeah, the, and, biggest, the biggest problem with all that is the fact that it's so... Um, Encompassing in our consumer, uh, consumer, uh, consumer life, I suppose, uh, it's going to be hard to get off of one thing and into a, and into the other, unless there's a some kind of middle ground to where you can like. I think there are some cars that are already built for like fossil fuels and also the uh, electric. Is that right? Yeah, there's the hybrid cars, and yeah. and that that's been a help. Um, but it's. You know, if, whenever you read studies about climate change and how much time we have left, and you read that Siberia is 104 degrees, for example, yeah. and it's blazing hot in, in, in the Arctic as well, you read things that say we have 10 year, 12 years, we have 10 years, we have less than 10 years. Yeah. And so I, I was... Um, the Sunrise Movement has been trying to move Democrats to the left on this, and they're trying to move Joe Biden on this as well. I, I don't see why these organizations uh, try so hard to move a more Republican centrist than uh, uh, those system resources on my part that may be me that we have to put a short as far as energy goes. Uh, but I, to make a, make a long story, I don't see why uh, these, uh, these uh, organizations go to the DNC when they can simply uh, endorse and help uh, the actual party that is trying to help them actually get more of a foothold within the system. Well, that was, that's what you would think would happen. I think that it will ha it would it'd be more likely to happen once we get ranked choice voting in states. Uh, I think people there are fears that people have that if they vote green, um, they the person they fear the most or that they feel is the most evil will get reelected or elected. But um, I may have said this last time, but I I firmly believe it. Ralph Nader said in 1996, when I ran for, uh, when I was his vice presidential running mate, 
here in New Jersey, and he ran as a Green throughout the country. He said, if you vote for the, if you consistently vote for the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil, and yep. the candidates get lesser and lesser and more and more evil. Yep. And so, if you look at 1996 with Ralph Nader, and then you look at 2016, 20 years later, and you had Hillary Clinton against Donald Trump. I mean, I, he should he should just say, I rest my case. Exactly. Yeah. It's part well, of this whole shift, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Well, since it looks like Michael Pierce went down as far as uh, memory, I, I, sh I need to uh, unfortunately end this conversation. Maybe oh. we, maybe we can uh, reschedule to email or to uh, um, to uh, Instagram again for like another week or so. Sure, sure, uh, and I can keep you updated on because the campaign keeps the world keeps changing, the issues keep coming up, yep. and you know the response, the re our responses are. My campaign's responses have to be like this. And yep, exactly. So, yeah. um, so there'll always be something different to talk about. Yep. Um, well, uh, well, the next time we get together, I would like to uh, ask you a few questions for our legislation. You may, you may want to uh, uh, sponsor or co-sponsor if you ever get in there in the first place. Which I, 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 have, a, I have a feeling that I, I have a feeling that you have a good chance of doing that. No, I, I would, uh, I'd be glad to talk about what programs I'd support, what kinds of, what kinds of bills I would sponsor or co-sponsor. Um, I do have a plan and a vision and um, I'd be glad to share that. And if people want to, if people want to see what I've got, you know, so far, what the vision is, they can go to my website at hoffmanforsenate.com, hoffmanforsenate.com. There are uh, links to media articles that have appeared. There are links to live streams that, uh, that we've uh, had on Tuesday nights, many Tuesday nights over the last three or four months. You can get a really good idea of where I stand on issues of peace, on the real Green New Deal, an eco-socialist eco Green New Deal, a, co a program to address the economic and worker problems that have arisen under this COVID-19 pandemic and much more. Well, that's good to hear. And I will definitely put uh, the link up below once I upload to my network. So, uh, okay, I, and I, but, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I'll send you the link to the website with the fossil fuels pledge on it. Okay, all right. Now I, I can only will I put that on, on the, uh, on when I upload, I'll also put that on the code and made it Okay. All right. Well, thank, well, thank you, for you for joining me on, on, uh, on Chapman's Uh we'll, we'll talk to you again. All right. And thank you so much. I, I enjoyed it. Me too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for joining me again for another edition of Green Up Progressive uh, presents Calvin Taylor. That was an interview with uh, Green uh, and, uh, member Matt Hoffman running against Cory Booker and another, uh, another Republican. But uh, join me for uh, for other news I, I have and I will uh, post them as I get them or as I don't. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel or please. Um, Donate to uh, paypal.me slash uh, cwebdev if you want to support this channel. Again, support this channel with whatever money you can or uh, subscribe to my channel and help me get uh, monetized by YouTube. Thank you, thank you again and peace out.